Anastasakis, Papasifakis wedding. Excellent. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 small details in Friends you never noticed. So, we'll go eat. You'll wear that. We'll be eating, and of course, you'll be wearing that. For this list, we're looking at the best subtleties that we missed the first time we watched the show, and the second, third, and fourth time. Which details are you surprised you never noticed? Let us know in the comments. I got the pin number to my ATM card. Can you get it for me? Sure, where is it? Uh, I scratched it on the ATM machine down on the corner. Ah, uh, so you're 5639? Number 20. Susan Sarandon slapped her daughter. What are you going to do, kill him? Like you did Charles? Oh, my baby! <laughs> In the season seven episode, The One with Joey's New Brain, Susan Sarandon guest stars as soap actress Cecilia Monroe. Monroe plays Jessica Lockhart on Days of Our Lives, a woman who often slaps other characters on the show. In fact, she's so famous for her slaps that Monica tries to get a slap of her own when she meets her in Joey's apartment. Oh my God, can I just ask you to do me oh, just one favor? Certainly. Would you slap me? Would you slap me right here in the face? <laughs> I'd love to, but my lawyer said I can't do that anymore. But there's one small interesting detail. Sarandon's own daughter, Eva Amori, plays Jessica's daughter, Dina, on days. So when Lockhart slaps Dina, that's actually Sarandon slapping her own daughter. That was a great scene. And, and that slap looks so real. How do you do that? Oh, just years of experience. Can I get some ice here? <laughs> Number 19, Phoebe gave her brother a condom. Oh. Hi, uh, did I accidentally drop a condom in your case? <laughs> do you remember the first time Phoebe met her half-brother Frank Jr.? We don't mean the time she tried to meet her dad, but wound up meeting Frank Jr. instead. So you look my big sister? Yeah. Well, this is huge. You can buy me beer. <laughs> I'm not gonna. No, we're talking about a time just before that, when Phoebe loses her gig at Central Park and ends up busking on the sidewalk outside the coffee shop. It happens rather quickly, but while Rachel is comforting Phoebe, a guy runs up and asks her for the condom he had accidentally dropped in her guitar case earlier. That guy, wouldn't you know it, is none other than Frank Jr. Kind of an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, Christine, I got it! Number 18, Rachel's really long pregnancy. And you're still pregnant. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I know how uncomfortable you are. You know what? You look great. Oh. Yeah, like 50 bucks. The longest human pregnancy ever recorded was 375 days and was carried out by a woman in Los Angeles in the 1940s. The second longest ever might have been Rachel Green's. We know that Rachel gets a positive pregnancy test result at Monica's wedding on May 15th, which means she had to have been pregnant for at least a couple of weeks by that point. Now, cut to the following February, the episode before Valentine's Day. It's nine months later and the baby kicks for the first time. Wow, she is kicking so much! Oh, she's like, um, oh, who's that kind of uh, annoying girl soccer player? Mia Hamm? Mia Hamm! <laughs> While Emma's date of birth is never mentioned, given the clothes New Yorkers are wearing in the episodes leading up to the season finale, it's gotta be springtime. Fans seem to have concluded that she was born on April 4th, which comes in at an around 11-month pregnancy. Number 17, Gunther Speaks. I fell down an elevator shaft. Uh, that sucks. I was buried in an avalanche. What? I used to be Bryce on all my children. As Friends fans can tell you, Gunther worked at Central Park. He can speak Dutch, he once played a character named Bryce on All My Children, and he's in love with Rachel. But how many of us realized that Gunther actually didn't say a word on the show until almost halfway through the second season? While he was there in the background making coffee in season one, it wasn't until season two, episode nine, that he uttered his first word. An incredibly simple but effective, yeah. Hey, Gunther, you got stairs in your place? Yeah. yeah go nuts. There we go. <laughs> The truth is, his character didn't even have a name until then, either. He came into work that day, and reportedly, co-creator Marta Kaufman told him, quote, Your name is Gunther now, and you get to say yeah today. Number 16, Marcel's Restaurant. Fox, he's doing it again! Oh, Marcel, stop humping the lamp! Stop humping! Now, Marcel, come on! 
come back, come here, Marcel. No, 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 not in my room. While Ross gave up his monkey at the end of season one, Marcel made a guest appearance in the big season two episode, The One After the Super Bowl. In it, Marcel is back in New York, this time as an acting monkey on the set of Outbreak 2, The Virus Takes Manhattan. Well, I tracked down Marcel and get this, he's healthy, he's happy, and he's right here in New York filming Outbreak 2, The Virus Takes Manhattan. But if you look really closely, that actually isn't the only place Marcel appears in the episode. Okay, well, not the actual monkey, but his name. We were all obviously paying more attention to Julia Roberts flirting with Chandler on their date, but take a second and look at the name of the restaurant on the menus. Number 15, Matthew Perry's Dad. I like her, she seems smart. Obviously, if you were a member of the Perry family or a close friend, you would have noticed when Matthew Perry's father made a guest appearance on the show. However, since most of us are not that familiar with the Perry family tree, allow us to fill you in. Matthew Perry's dad, John Bennett Perry, began his acting career in the 1970s and over the decades has appeared in movies, loads of television shows, and was even the Old Spice sailor in a series of commercials. Come on, wake up to the freshness of the open sea with Old Spice. Plus, he wasn't just a father in real life, he also played one on TV. In the case of Friends, the elder Perry played Joshua's dad in one of the show's most memorable episodes. Oh, Dad, what are you guys doing here? Oh, well, we cut the trip short. France sucks. <laughs> Number 14, Chandler and Monica's house was a famous movie house. Thank you for letting us see the house again. And thank you for explaining to us what escrow means. I've already forgotten what you said, but thank you. <laughs> Take as long as you want. Just let me know when you're through. We know that real estate agents are required to disclose certain things about a house to potential buyers, but we're not sure if the fact that Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern attempted to rob the place is one of those things. Yup. The house that Monica and Chandler buy in the final season of Friends is the same one that Macaulay Culkin defended so brilliantly in Home Alone almost 15 years prior. This is my house. I have to defend it. Sure, the wallpaper is gone and the furniture is different, but look a little closer. The house across the street should probably look familiar to Home Alone superfans. It's the Murphy's residence across from the McAllisters. Now that deserves a classic hands-on face scream, don't you think? <laughs> Number 13, the potato cake. Okay, so this isn't a potato cake so much as an actual potato in a cake display. If you don't know what we're talking about, allow us to take you back to Season 4, Episode 8. Joey walks into Central Perk looking for Chandler. He goes up to the counter to ask Gunther if he's seen him. I thought you were Chandler. <laughs> but, um, what if he's over there? And there, sitting prominently on the counter for all to see, is a regular old potato in a cake stand. Why is it there? Was it supposed to be there? Is it some kind of inside joke or just a mistake? Was the budget that tight? All good questions we unfortunately do not have answers to. Vafanapoli, huh? <laughs> Number 12, 5639. Can you do me a favor? I got the pin number to my ATM card. Can you get it for me? Sure, where is it? Uh, I scratched it on the ATM machine down on the corner. Do you have a hard time remembering the pin for your ATM card? Well, in the season five finale, Joey reveals his trick for always having it around when you need it. Assuming you always use the same ATM, why not scratch the number onto the machine? But while this might sound like a Joey being smart moment, in the end, it's more of a Joey being Joey situation. Ah, uh, so you're 5639? That's it, thanks, Phoebe. You see, his pin, as revealed by Phoebe, is 5639. Why does that matter, you ask? Well, do you know what 5639 spells on a dial pad? You guessed it, Joey. So basically, Joey can't remember his own name. Guys, guys, please, come on, come on. This is obviously just a big misunderstanding. No, it's not, what are you Joey. Talking? Hey, 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 don't look at me, I'm just working. Number 11, green with an extra E. It's true, some names are hard to spell. We'll admit we had to look up Tribbiani to confirm it had two Bs, but you know what name we don't need help with? Green. However, for some reason, Ross did. <laughs> oh, so you invited Rachel then? Sure, why not? In season four, when Ross and Emily send out their wedding invitations, we see Ross dropping off the one for Rachel in the mailbox. And on the envelope, clear as day, it says Ms. Rachel Green, with an extra E at the end. No one seems to know how it's really supposed to be spelled. But this discrepancy is a lot funnier when you imagine Dan Quayle himself encouraging Ross to add the extra E on the invitation. Yeah, that's canon now. 
You're right phonetically, but put it up. There you go. All right. All right. Number 10, ode to Jennifer Aniston's family name. So I'm gonna go through the hotel and see if there's any other weddings going on. Okay. Oh, but don't tell them Monica's pregnant because they frown on that. Jennifer Aniston's father was born Yanis Anastasakis before anglicizing his name to John Aniston with the move to America. Why are we telling you this? Because in the one with Monica and Chandler's wedding, Rachel goes looking for someone to officiate the union if Joey can't get there in time. And she finds another wedding taking place at the hotel. None other than the Anastasakis Papasifakis wedding. Are they Greek Orthodox? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're my friends, uh, Monica Stephanopoulos <laughs> and, uh, and Chandler Acidophilus. <laughs> It's a wonderful nod to Jennifer's dad and their family name. And her perfect pronunciation of the Greek names is a nice touch to Rachel's character. Anastasakis, Papasifakis wedding, excellent. <laughs> Number nine, the VD poster keeps showing up. Oh, you know, the asthma guy's really cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know which one you're gonna be? No, no. But I hear Lyme disease is open, so, you know. <laughs> Good luck, man, I hope you get it. In season one, Joey gets very excited when he lands a modeling job for the New York City Free Clinic. That is, until he sees that his particular poster is not warning against Lyme disease, as he'd hoped, but against STDs. Next thing you know, the city is covered with the posters, and Joey is decidedly less excited about the opportunity, although his friends have a good time with it. So I guess you all saw it. <laughs> what? Saw what? No, we're just laughing. You know how laughter can be infectious. <laughs> if you thought the end of the episode was the end of the posters, you'd have been wrong. It seems these posters would continue to haunt Joey for the next little while because a couple of episodes later, as Monica and Phoebe are crossing the street, surprise, surprise, what's that on the wall in the background? Number eight, Hugsy reappears. I got secrets of my own, you know. <laughs> you don't have any secrets. Oh, yeah? Well, you don't know about Hugsy, my bedtime penguin pal. <laughs> In season five, the stress of keeping Monica and Chandler's budding relationship a secret causes Joey to let slip a secret of his own to Rachel and Phoebe. Hugsy, his bedtime penguin pal. Now, we all remember Hugsy coming back many seasons later when Joey has to deal with the fact that baby Emma also loves the stuffed penguin. Rachel, let's be clear on this, okay? I do not love Hugsy. I like him a normal amount. <laughs> Emma loves him. Yeah, well, why wouldn't she? He's a wonderful person. <laughs> but what many of us missed was all of the appearances by Hugsy in between. Whether it was on the couch in the background or sitting under the dartboard, Hugsy showed up in many more episodes than you might remember. You and I used to hang out all the time. Because I was, I was your daddy's girlfriend. But you're not anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not. Number seven, Monica's yelling jar. Hey, Phoebe. Hey. Hey, have dinner. Dinner was good. Just saying hi. Now I'm gonna go. We're all familiar with the concept of a swear jar, but in season eight, we learn that Monica has a yelling jar at work. In fact, when Phoebe comes to visit her at the restaurant and is flirting with her sous chef, Tim, you can see the jar filled with cash on the shelf behind him. Although because it's just indicated as Monica's jar, we don't know it's a yelling jar until a few seconds later when Monica raises her voice but exclaims that she's not putting a dollar in the jar. This works out well because she couldn't if she wanted to. From one shot to the next, the jar is no longer on the shelf. I'll give him your number if I could just get one calamari and one Caesar salad. I did not yell. I am not putting a dollar in the jar. <laughs> Number six, Estelle was a nurse. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Yeah, honey, they wouldn't miss this. Yeah, relax, you only got nine centimeters and the baby's at zero station. <laughs> did you know that Joey's longtime agent Estelle was also a nurse? We know this because she was right there in the delivery room when Carol gave birth to her and Ross's son, Ben, in season one. There's a few too many people in this room. There's about to be one more. So anybody who's not an ex-husband or a lesbian life partner, out you go. Weirdly, that was also 17 episodes after she left Joey her card subsequent to seeing his play Freud. After Ben is born, we never see Estelle in a hospital again, and her nursing duties are never mentioned. So we can only assume that managing Joey's career became so all-consuming that she had to drop her nursing gig. She also probably didn't like the fact that as a nurse, she wouldn't be able to smoke at work. I'm just gonna put in a call here, and we'll find out what's going on and straighten it out. Yeah, hi. Lori, please. <laughs> Number five, 
Monica's towels. All right, Monica categorizes her towels. How many categories are there? During the lightning round of the apartment bet trivia game, Joey and Chandler are asked about the number of categories Monica has for her towels. In the heat of the moment, they can only think of four, but Joey takes a flyer and correctly blurts out 11. Everyday use, fancy, guest, fancy guest. Two seconds. Uh, 11? 11, unbelievable, 11 is correct. Yeah! But that also begs the question, what are the other categories besides everyday use, fancy, guest, and fancy guest? While we don't know all of the other seven categories, we do know a few, including those of kitchen, beach, and old. Keen eyes will have spotted these categories scrawled on the stacked up boxes as the girls packed up to move across the hall. This is a girl's apartment! That is a boy's apartment! It's dirty and it smells! This is pretty! It's so pretty! And look, it's, and it's purple! Number four, the disappearing beam. put a hat on his head. A hat! Yes! A hat. We need a hat! We need a hat. One of the more memorable moments from the early seasons of the show is when Ross, while running away from Monica, bangs his head into a wooden beam in the apartment. Given how prominent the beam is in the living quarters, you might be curious as to why no one else ever smacked into it. The main reason for that is because the beam totally disappeared. Actually, it came and went for the first few seasons, until finally being removed for good. As Lisa Kudrow and David Schwimmer explained in the reunion show, the beam often got in the way. This was here in the beginning. And, it was here and in the, it, was, it kept like... <laughs> it got in the way. It yeah. got in the way, yeah. Sorry, you got lost As, as it's beam. probably getting in the way now. Well, I See? don't know. Oh. Number three, the hidden menu. For 10 seasons, the gang ordered coffees and cappuccinos at Central Perk, but not once did we hear them order a Long Island cream, a movingly rich and creaming coffee straight from the mutter's udder, or a Ms. Liberty blend, a liberating blend light and sweet. You'll be crying freedom when you taste it. So you guys want coffees? Yeah, but uh, I don't wanna be up too late, so I'll have a decaf. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Actually, can I get some hot water with a little lemon? The chalkboard menu behind the counter wasn't always visible to us, but it definitely would have been to them. How they were never intrigued enough to order a Manhattan mocha is beyond us. That one would have been perfect the time they were trying to stay awake to party. Seriously, can I get my coffee? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ross. I'll get it for you right now. And since I made you wait, I'll toss in a free muffin. <laughs> Number two, Magna Doodles. Who'd you talk to? Never mind. You mean you didn't get it from this? <laughs> With so much going on, it's sometimes easy to miss the various Magna Doodle notes and drawings in the background. But given how they change and how fun some of them are, it's worth working the pause button a few times. The Magna Doodle first appeared in the guy's apartment in season three and featured a pretty generic shopping list and a Joey call your dad note. But going forward, there were all kinds of different doodles, from the thank you note from the robbers to another one bites the dust for Ross's bachelor party. There was also the doodle of a flag planted atop a mountain during the finale, indicating they had reached the summit. What's the matter? I need to say goodbye to the table first. I understand. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Everyone was an Arquette. After Courtney Cox and David Arquette's marriage, everyone was an Arquette for one episode. Condom balloons. Somehow, Joey using condoms for balloons is not the weirdest thing he's done. Dude, this isn't funny. What am I gonna do? I go to sleep last night, everything's cool, I wake up this morning, the stripper's gone in the ring! He's gone! You slept with the stripper? Of course! <laughs> Monica's comfy wedding shoes. We wouldn't put it past Monica to remember everything except white wedding heels. Uh, uh, let's do the rings. <laughs> Apartment numbers changed. Number five changed to 20 early on in the series. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll talk later. Yeah. I got the ticket! I got the ticket! Five hours from now! Shoop, shoop, shoop. Oh, you 
must stop shooping. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, did they reserve their table at the coffee shop? I don't like sitting up here. I'm, I'm gonna go over the wait till they got here first. <laughs> Do you ever wonder how the gang always got the best table in Central Park? Why, except for on very rare occasions, were the couch and adjacent chairs always free at such a popular place? Well, we've never heard of being able to reserve tables at a coffee shop, but apparently that's what they did. It isn't always there, but often enough you can see a little reserved sign sitting on the table. There's a fan theory that the sign was put there by Gunther so as to always allow for a place of prominence for Rachel. It's settled. Every cafe needs a Gunther. Okay, but well, the money's good. Plus you get to stare at Rachel as much as you want. <laughs> what? Flexible hours. Oh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.